Hello students, welcome to ECLIMU Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed branches of physics and we said physics can be categorized into six main branches, remember? And the first branch of physics was mechanics. We have waves, we have geometrical optics, we have electricity and magnetism. The third branch of physics was thermodynamics and then the sixth one was atomic physics. Now, in this lesson, we are going to discuss the relationship between physics and other subjects. And we are going to see how different subjects like chemistry, biology, history, geography depend on physics to explain different phenomena or to develop devices which they use to study other subjects. We are also going to see how physics borrows some knowledge of mathematics and chemistry to express its laws and principles and ideas in a scientific way. My name is Albert. I hope you are enjoying the lesson. At the end of this lesson, I would like you to be in a position of explaining and stating the relationship between physics and other subjects such as mathematics, biology, chemistry, history, technology, medicine, and many, many other topics like philosophy and how the knowledge of physics has enhanced the advancement in those subjects and fields in terms of research and innovation. Any subjects that we learn in high school depend on physics and sometimes physics depend on some of the topic like mathematics to express its laws and principles and ideas. So we are going to look at how physics is related to biology, how physics is related to history, how physics is related to geography, how physics is related to home science, how physics is related to region, and then how physics is related to mathematics and technology. How is physics related to history? We are going to realize that historians are interested on the events that took place in the past. And to understand the events which took place in the past, historians are interested with the year at which those events took place and when they took place and what was happening during that time. And for them to understand that one better, then they need to find a tool which they can use to locate the age or the year at which those events took place. And then now physics comes in with the uh, knowledge of carbon dating in a topic called radioactivity, which is going to explain how you can precisely determine the age of fossils using the carbon uh, 12, it's something we call carbon 12 or carbon 13 isotopes. In this case, we are going to use them to determine the exact age in which the fossils or human beings and the activities which they undertook in the past. Physics and geography have a very, very fertile relationship in a way that all weather instruments which they use in weather stations, how they predict weather patterns, they use the knowledge of physics to develop those apparatus which they use in those weather stations. For example, in a Stevenson screen, we have an instrument called the six thermometer. This is a six six is maximum and minimum thermometer, minimum thermometer. And the knowledge of making this instrument relies on the knowledge and ideas of physics. Also, we have things like wind fan, hydro hydrometer. We also have hydrometer, an instrument which uses the knowledge of floating and thinking of bodies which can be used to measure the relative density of, of, uh, of liquids and many, many other things. So geography is related to physics and it borrows the knowledge of physics to explain or to make those weather instruments and many, 
other things which they use. Physics and home science has a very wide relationship in a way that in physics or in home science, they use the knowledge of physics of poor conductors or insulators to make cooking instruments or uh, cooking uh, vessels like pans, knives. As you can see in this picture, they are using, they are making a pan using a plastic, a plastic handle. A plastic handle, a plastic is a poor conductor of heat. So when you are going to burn your, your food using this pan, you are not going to get burnt on your hand since the metallic part which makes the pan is a good conductor of heat. In the second pan, you can see they have used the wood. The knowledge of, uh, of insulators, wood is a good insulator. So home science uses that idea of insulators to make kitchen equipment, especially the handles to avoid uh, one from being burnt. Sometimes we also use the knowledge of physics in terms of measurement like mass to determine the ratios in which you can mix different brands of food to make it taste better. Physics and biology also have a very wide interrelationship in a way that biology depends on physics with the idea of uh, lenses, the idea of lens, lenses to make a microscope, either light microscope or electronic microscope, which biology uses to study the cell and a cell in biology learned it as the basic unit of life. So in physics, we help them to make an instrument called a microscope. And when a microscope has been made using the knowledge of physics, it's going to help biologists to study the cell, which is a basic unit of life in living things. Chemistry relies mostly in physics to explain the forces within the atom and the atomic structure. Remember, in physics and the mechanics, we are studying motion of bodies and the influence of force. And one of the force that we are going to discuss in physics is what we call the electrostatic, electrostatic force. And this is a force of attraction between opposite charged particles. So what we are going to realize in physics is that the electrons are negatively charged and the protons are positively charged. So these two are going to experience a force of attraction between two opposite charged particles, that is electrostatic force. And this idea is going to, to help chemistry to explain the atomic structure. And it is the structure of the atom that then determines the reactivity of an atom, which we are going to explain more in chemistry if you are following the lessons in ECLIMO, you have probably discussed the reactivity of different particles, and you are going to realize that particles which have a weak electrostatic force, they are going to react very fast, and particles which have strong electrostatic charges, they are going, or electrostatic force, they are going to react very slowly. Physics is related to mathematics in such a way that physics relies strongly in mathematics. In this case, we are going to realize that physics expresses its ideas, laws, and principles using mathematical concepts like formulas and mathematical expressions. Like you can notice on this screen, we have uh, different formulas here. And you can note signs like equal sign, a sign commonly used in mathematics. We have addition signs, a sign commonly used in mathematics. We have subtraction signs. Then we have other signs like multiplication, like in this case. And then we have other signs like division, like you can see in this case. And then we can see then other signs like square root and many, many other uh, signs which are commonly in mathematics. So when we are going to study different 
uh, topics in physics, we are going to realize like at the third topic or the fourth topic in form one, we are going to define pressure mathematically as force per unit area or force acting perpendicularly per unit area. So in mathematics, it will look like this one. Then we are going to, to express work, work as force times distance covered. So you can see we have used the, the mathematical expression and an equal sign. All we are also going to discuss uh, other things like if we want to get pressure in, in liquid, we are going to multiply height of the liquid, multiply by the density of the liquid, then multiply by the gravitational field strength. So as you can see, mathematics gives physics the ideas in terms of the mathematical expressions to express itself. So without mathematics, physics cannot express itself. Physics is also related to technology in different ways. And we are going to look at the first case in which physics is related to technology. And we are going to realize that physics has helped in the advancement of medicine in such a way that it has given them the idea of x-rays, which they can use to diagnose and treat different diseases like cancer. We have body scanners, as you can see in this picture on the uh, video, that is a body scanner. We have the CT scanners. We also have lasers and many, many other devices which we use in medicine, including the syringes, with the one that they use to inject medicine to patients, like right from uh, the, 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 the dosage, when they are prescribing a dosage, they use the idea of measurement and many, many other applications in medicine. Another way in which physics is related to technology is through uh, telecommunication and in this case we are going to see the knowledge of physics has helped especially in waves in the manufacture of uh, satellites and microwave dishes used in information technology to relay information uh, in the whole world right now as you can see you can even make a phone call from here to USA in a multiple of seconds and then the person will get the information Right now, if you can listen to any radio station in the world online, and that is courtesy of physics, and in that case, we say physics has really helped in an evolution of uh, communication and telecommunication at large. Physics is also uh, used in defense industry, in the manufacture and the use of most modern and complex machines things like machine guns, all types of guns, atomic weapons, they use the knowledge of physics, especially the atomic weapons, they use the knowledge of physics, of atomic physics to manufacture those weapons and that one has strengthened the security of nations. So students, we have discussed the relationship between physics and other subjects and that will be the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss the the careers which one can join or the profession which one can join when they have the knowledge of physics and we want to see different careers like in medicine, education to become a physics teacher, engineers and many, many other careers. So that is the end of our lesson today. Welcome to ECLMU Learning Simplified.